Our next topic is about a set of points in Rn. All right, and in Rn, let's pick some set of points. So first question, how many, okay, how large can x be if for all pair of points in x, the distance between x and y is exactly one. Okay, let's say I put this thing points, right? So imagine that I have a1, a2, am. These are the points in x, which is subset of rn. Um, how many points can you choose? For instance, on the plane, <laughs> what is the best? Is this best possible? I think so, yeah. All are cubed. And I, I shouldn't be able to draw the better picture. Right? So it seems like uh, maybe n plus 1 is the number of points. And actually, it's easy. How do we show that? Well, let's say we may assume the last point is zero, right? Uh, let's say a m is zero. I mean, zero is a vector in R n. Then uh, a i size one for all i from one up to m minus one, and a i minus a j size one for all i j up to one up well, from one up to m minus one now let's look at this if I, take, if I take a square so this is same as this is same as that and then a i dot a i and uh, a j dot a j minus twice a i dot a j is one and I know that this is one, that's one. So a i dot a j is half. All right. Now, what I do is to construct a matrix uh, M consisting of all these vectors. All right, now, now look at the matrix, which is like um, M transpose times M, right? So you have A1 transpose, A2 transpose, A M minus one transpose, and A1, A2, A M minus one. And if I multiply that, then A I transpose times A J is actually equal to a i dot a j, which is going to be half if i is different from j, and it's going to be one if i is equal to j, right? So this is a matrix uh, whose number of rows is m minus one, number of columns is m minus one, and all other entries, all octagonal entries are half, all the uh, diagonal entries are one. All right, and what is the rank? Well, rank of A is, I guess that any of you can answer easily. So this is equal to, I mean, it's non-singular, so it's M minus one. But this has to be less than or equal to rank of M. Rank of M is less than or equal to the number of rows of M, which is equal to N minus uh, N. Right, so therefore, m minus one is less than or equal to n, so m is at most m plus one. Okay, so if you have a set of points in R n such that if pairwise distance 
is exactly one, like only one value, then you can only have n plus one points. You cannot have more than n plus one points. Now, as the title of this, this, uh, this section suggests, we will talk about the uh, extension of this result. What if? What if distance between distinct elements takes uh, two values? So such a set is called the two distance set. Okay. And here's a theorem due to Laman and Rogers and Seidel in 1977. So let me write this form. Let's say these are the set of points in Rn where Ai minus Aj has value d1 or d2 for all i less than or equal to j, then m is less than or equal to something. Uh, let me just copy this. Right? So uh, if the distance takes two possible, only two possible values, then the set of number of points is at most quadratic. So how do we prove that? Again, we use linear algebra. Uh, now we will talk about vector space of polynomials. Okay. So what we do is for a point in uh, Rn, uh, define fi of x to be the this polynomial x minus ai square minus d1 square times x minus ai square minus d2 squared. Alright, so this is a polynomial with n variables, right? So f1, f2, fmr yeah, so for all i from 1 up to m so the, these are polynomial with n variables x1, x2 up to xn now what we look at is the following if I assign AI into FI, then what's going to happen? So AI minus AI is zero. So uh, minus D1 squared times minus D2 squared. This is D1 squared times D2 squared. And if I put AI, uh, AJ into AI, then the distance between AI and AJ is either D1 or D2. So uh, if you plug in, then this is by construction, it's going to be zero. And this is nice because that implies that F1, F2, Fm are linearly independent. It's easy. If you have a linear combination of these polynomials whose sum is zero, then you put the AI then you will realize that the coefficients of a i is going to be zero and that's true for every i all right now it remains to estimate the dimension of the vector space i mean it's a subspace of polynomials containing all these vectors now uh, demand so the number of them is uh, less than or equal to dimension of the of a subspace of 
polynomials containing all of f1 up to fm right so how do i find the demand well i only need to look at the i mean i need to construct some set of polynomials which spans all of them so let's look at this uh, let's look at this polynomial so what kind of term do we expect right, if we expand it right right so for instance let me write more carefully so xi okay so this is like xj minus aij square minus d1 square times xj minus a ij square minus d2 squared right so this is like some x sum of xj squared minus twice sum of aij xj plus <laughs> aij squared uh, minus d1 squared times xj squared minus twice aij xj plus sum of aij squared minus d2 squared and then we are expanding it so what kind of term do we expect uh, so the product of these two so let's first consider the xj squared okay that's one polynomial I mean it's uh, one polynomial right and if I make a product of this together with that so that's one polynomial so let's say xj squared times uh, yeah times xj hmm. so this is one polynomial and this is n polynomials because I, I can oh it's not x it's xi n polynomials and then I have a situation where like a product of x two of these things so this is like xi xj and the number of them is how many do we have well right n choose 2 plus n right because if i and j are equal then it's n if i and j are different then there are n choose two possibilities and then i might have uh, uh, this linear term times constant term and they are contained in the span of xi and then also constant term right so the product of these two that's constant term all right now so the number of them here is n, here is 1, right? So the dimension, what is dimension? So f1, f2, fm are contained in the span of the above uh, 1 plus n plus m to do n choose 2 plus n plus n plus 1 polynomials so that means m is less than or equal to this sum and what is that <laughs> uh, right so n. right so it's n choose 2 plus n plus n plus 1 uh plus m plus one so 
this is the sum of the numbers from 1 up to n minus 1 and n and n plus 1 so I can say this is equal to that plus n plus 1 all right so that's the proof that every two distance set in Rn has at most this many points you cannot have more than that all right and this is not tight, actually. It'd be better to have a better, like whenever, whenever we have a bound, sometimes we, we don't have a tight bound, sometimes we do. And in this case, this is not a tight bound. Actually, uh, eight years later, there is an improvement proved by block Pines in 1984 right so what he proved okay so in Laman Rogers side uh, they proved that this at most this much copy but now what he proved is improvement without that all right so what's the idea idea is actually using same constructions so these are the polynomial we already know that they are linearly independent but the claim is they together with x1 x2 and xn and this constant polynomial are linearly independent that's the claim how do we know i mean if if true by the way if this is true then m plus n plus one is less than or equal to and all of them are contained in the span of them so this is n plus two n choose two n plus two choose n two plus n plus one so this implies that m is at most n plus two choose two right so we have these polynomials f1 of the fm these are construction constructed from the example and then we add a few extra polynomials which still are the linearly independent right so we kept the property that they are linearly independent and then, uh, since they are contained in the same vector space, we still have this kind of bound. And that improved the number. Right? So suppose, so in order to prove that they are linearly independent, suppose that uh, sum of the ci fi x plus dj xj <laughs> plus uh, b is zero this is from one up to n this is from one up oh one up to n this one up to n all right now we need to prove that all the coefficients ci's and dj's and b are zero so how do we prove that all right one way we can well, well, one method we can do is take um, x equals y times ei for some y which is uh, a real number and ei is a vector where the i's coordinate is 1 and all other coordinates is 0 so what happens if we put uh, this vector in this polynomial now we will have one ver polynomial with one variable right y so if we put this then what we get is for some uh, sum from 1 up to 
and CI times. Now we need to put uh, this. Oops. <laughs> we need to put y dot ei over here, right? And actually, it's written here. Right. So it's uh, sum of x i squared. So that's y squared, right? Minus twice a i is a x j. So this is twice a uh, i. Oh, I, yeah. I shouldn't use the same i. Let's use different i. Uh, right. It's not. It's not good to have. Let's say ek. Right? So it's ik. Right? Yes, aik times y plus some constant, right? Sum of ai. j squared minus d1 squared product with uh, y squared minus twice aiky plus sum of ai j squared minus d2 squared and plus okay so now uh, xj so xj is 0 if j is not equal to k and it's 1 if y if j is equal to k so this is going to be dky right plus b is 0 all right and this is true this is true this is this is polynomial of degree 4 in y and this is true for all values of y so this is identity Right. So now let's look at the uh, coefficients of uh, y cubed. And y to the 4. Right. So if I look at the y to the 4 on both sides, then what we get is uh, Sum of oh this is from one up to m. Sum of ci is from one up to m. That's in the left hand side, right? Right to the four. And this is equal to zero. If I look at the coefficient of y cubed, then what do we get? On the right hand side is zero. On the left hand side is gonna be um, sum from y of so c i minus twice a i k plus c i. Oh yeah, minus twice a i k is zero. So what what imp this implies is the sum of c i a i k. Is zero, right? And this is true for all k, right? All right. So that's one equation. This is second equations. All right. Now, if we put x to be as our favorite assignment if x okay x is a a k then we know that uh, right so we are putting it over here right so f i a k is gonna be zero if i is equal, different from k and it's gonna be d 
d1 squared d2 squared if i is equal to k. So what's left? It's going to be ck d1 squared d2 squared from there. And then x is equal to k. So this is going to be uh, d j uh, a kj <laughs> right it takes coordinate and plus constant b all right so now we have these three equations Now what can you do? Well, actually, I'm going to sum this over all k. Right? So, by sum, and I'm going to multiply that, multiply ck. So from 1 up to m, and ck times this thing. So ck d1 d2 squared, and sum of dj akj oh uh, well uh yeah okay let's do it plus b so this is again zero right because it's a linear combination of zeros now what is that well that's a ck squared d1, d2 squared but d1, d2 are constant so it's the sum of this plus 1 up to m and d j so this is j let's let's change the sum order of summations right from 1 up to n And then it's okay, so dj comes out, and then uh, it's gonna be from 1 up to m, c, k, a, k, j. Right? And b times sum of c, k. Now, this might be slightly confusing for some of you, but uh, if you look at this thing, that's same as this guy, except you need to change i to be k and k to be j, right? So this term is 0. This term, oh, did I make a mistake? No? Oh, no, 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 this is okay. This is just sum of squares. So this is 0. And sum of the coefficient, this is 0. So what end up is CK, sum of ck squared d1, d2 squared. This is what's left. Aha. Uh -huh. And I know that d1, d2 are distinct values. Distinct non-zero values. I mean, oh, it doesn't matter whether they are distinct, but what we end up is sum of the ck squared is 0. So that means C1, C2, all these things are zero. Aha, so this proves that they are linearly independent. All right. So if you have zero points, pairwise distance is at most, uh, has at most two values, then uh, the number of them is precisely no, at most, n plus 2 choose 2. And there's a generalization. So if x is an s distance set in Rn, then the size of that is n plus. Now you have a pattern, right? This is due to Banai uh, 
and I, their husband and wife, uh, Japanese professors and they, who used to be in the U.S. and Stanton in 1983. So you might still ask whether this is uh, tight, right? And plus two choose two. And in general, it's not tight. There are, there are values of n where, uh, I mean, especially for small values, the best, best bound can be improved. 